Okay, continuing with our look at parameter passing mechanisms, I wanted specifically to look at how you deal with variadic functions in C and C++. So the idea of a function that can accept an arbitrary number of parameters, you know, 1, 500, whatever it might be. So the first approach that we'll look at is in C. And essentially C provides a suite of macros that allows you to do this. So this is the kind of thing that's used in printf and scanf and whatnot to accept however many parameters you happen to pass. So the uh, code example that we've got, and this is actually also in your lab nine file, or lab nine repository, is this var args dot c. So in this one, we're creating a max function that just accepts an arbitrary number of parameters. However many you pass it, it'll uh, it'll go through and process. And for this one, it's just supposed to find the biggest value that you pass. So the way it actually works is you call max. The first thing you pass it is an integer telling it how many more values are coming. So this is just a count, it's kind of like the idea of an array size, where we're just saying, okay, here's how many values are coming, and then you pass it the actual data values. So you can call max, you know, in this instance, it's got four data values to process, and it needs to find the biggest of those. In this instance, it's passing one data value, so it's presumably going to be the biggest. Um, in this instance, it's passing three data values, so it's going through and finding the biggest of those. So first off, we'll uh, we'll just make sure this works, and the reason we'll do that, I'll make sure it's compiled. Um, so we'll just run it, and so it's looking at 0 0.1, negative 7, 200, and 12. 200 is the biggest. That works. Uh, just with the one value, 1,002, it's the biggest. That works. Uh, 15, 10, and 0, 15. Okay, so it does appear to be working. The reason I'm um, you know, laughing about this is if you grabbed the first version of the repository that was out there. It uh, contained a glitch where it didn't actually function. And as we look at barargs.c, we'll talk about why. So let's take a look at how this stuff actually works, what we have to do to make our function work. So first off, you'll notice in terms of syntax, Instead of actually providing a parameter list here, since we don't know how many parameters there's going to be, we use this dot, dot, dot sequence. So if you look, we've included a library called stdr.h. So that's got the macro definitions in it that make all this stuff work. So that's got the support for our dot, dot, dot and whatnot in there. So you have to include the library. When you define your function, you use the dot, dot, dot in place of the arbitrary number of parameters that are coming. And then we're going to use a special data type to capture the list of arguments, a macro to initialize it to actually get the data values into our data type, and then another one to go through one by one and grab sort of the next item in sequence. So the data type for our, our argument list is this va underscore list. So you can call your parameter whatever, or your, your variable, whatever you like. But um, here I'm saying, okay, arg list is going to be my list of whatever it was they passed. And to initialize this, we call va start. We give it the variable we want filled in and tell it how many values were actually passed. So if they passed four, the four values will wind up in this arg list somewhere. So VA start is probably allocating space, space out in the heap somewhere and going through and copying whatever values were passed based on this into that space. So in this case for max, what we want to do is keep track of what the biggest value was out of all those things that have been passed. So what I'm going to do is grab the first value and in the beginning, of course, if it's the only thing I've seen, it's the biggest so far. And then one by one, we'll look at the rest of them and see if they're bigger than the biggest thing I've seen so far. So a fairly traditional operation for that. So VA arg is the macro that lets us grab the next thing in the list. So it just remembers where we left off and picks up with the next one. 
So you pass it the list and you pass it what data type you're expecting it to see. And so that's significant in that what's actually happening is VAR is just walking through this chunk of memory where it's got the space for the parameters that you passed and it's saying, okay, the next thing in memory should be one of these. The next thing in memory should be a char or a float or a double or whatever it is. So your function has to know what data types it's expecting to receive in what order. So if you think about printf and scanf, that's why they've got those format strings. What printf or scanf would do is read through the format strings and when it sees something like a, a percent %d, it's going to go, ah, the next thing I'm supposed to see is an int. Or if it sees a percent %c, it's, oh, the next thing I'm supposed to see is a char. And so that's how it works its way through this list going, okay, the next call to VAR has to expect one of these things. So you go through this list one at a time, and each time you want to grab a new value, you call VAR one more time, say, okay, grab the next thing from this list and treat it as one of these. And in the originally posted version of the lab, you know, I had this idea where it was expecting to receive doubles, but back off in the main routine here, I was actually passing integer values here. So what was happening is it was passing ints. So in memory, it was in the sort of parameter list, it was putting the bit representations for integer values. And yet, in here, it was saying, ah, look at the next thing in memory and treat it as a double. And of course, the bit representations for doubles are completely different from ints. And so it was seeing completely, it was getting completely different results than one would expect. And if the sizes of the parameters that were passed up here differ from the sizes of the data type you were interpreting it as, then you've got even more problems because then it's actually misinterpreting where the boundaries between things lie in the stack. So you can get some really weird and wonderful results out of that. Um, if you happen to take a look in the 3.30 Discord site, there's a bit of ongoing discussion about that while, uh, while I was going through the debugging process trying to figure out why uh, Max wasn't working. So you go through this cycle of grabbing these things in sequence, and then once you're done, you use VA and basically this is going through and cleaning up the heap space that was created back at the beginning with that VA start. So it's just going through and doing some dynamic allocation and then the deallocation. So just so that you don't have any memory leaks. So this is the idea, right? If you're using variadic functions in C, you use the stdarg.h library. You use the dot, dot, dot to specify there's an arbitrary number of these things. VA list. For your variable, it's got the list of them. VA start to initialize it. VA end to clean it up at the end. And each time you want to grab one more, you use VA arg, your list of values, and then what data type you're expecting to see next. Oh, it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Ah. Okay, that's a little better. So I just wanted to take a uh, quick look at the C++ approach for handling variable numbers of arguments. And this is quite different than the one we just looked at. So let's take a look at template.cpp here. And again, this is in your Lab 9 repository as well. So the way it works in C++ is we provide a templated version of the function for the base case, the minimum number of parameters that you're expecting to be passed. And then you provide, if you like, a recursive case that says, okay, well, if I'm passed more than the minimum number, then I'm going to look at the front value or the front couple of values and make a recursive call to go through and look at the rest of them. And that recursive call would call, you know, possibly the general case over and over and over again, essentially pulling off one or two items at the front each time until eventually it reached that base case where there was just one call left. So it's a quite different approach to thinking about how you're going to write your functions. You're actually, if you like, you've got a recursive design to your collection of functions. 
So in this case, we're going to write a sum function. So it'll just take the sum of an arbitrary number of whatever data type you're passing. So you could pass it ints, you could pass it uh, um, floats, you could pass it doubles. If you've got an appropriate plus operation defined for other data types, like a string has plus assigned to it, it could, pass, it could accept other data types as well. So the idea is we're going to make this a templated function. So we accept an arbitrary data type. So we'll write the base case first. And so in our generic data type T, if you just pass one value, then we'll say the sum of that one value is just whatever the value is. So if I pass it sum of three, it should just give me back three. So that one's nice and straightforward, base case. And then for the general case, we're going to say, well, if you pass me more than one value, then the sum is going to be that first value plus the sum of the rest. So if we take a look inside, we'll see that that's actually what it's doing is it's going to take the front value and then the sum of the rest. So we'll talk about the syntax here. So since this is going to be templated, we've got to give a type for that first argument. So we'll have our first required argument, so front or whatever you want to call it. And then somehow we have to specify a data type for all of the rest that are coming. And so this is where this syntax comes in. So args is going to be our type name, and it's for this dot, dot, dot type. So behind the scenes, this is probably using that, that std args.h to actually implement all this, but hey. So the syntax for our C++ side is say, okay, the type name for our dot, dot, dot is going to be args. And when we go to define the parameter list here, the formal parameter list, again, we've got front is of type T, and then my dot, dot, dot type, so my args, dot, 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 and give your parameter list a name. So args refers to everything else that's in the list, everything after that front element. And then we're saying, okay, when I want to compute this, the sum of my giant list is going to be the sum of the front element, plus a recursive call. So we're going to call sum on all of the rest. So if I say sum one, two, three, the one is going to go to front and the two, three is going to go to args. And then it's going to say, okay, well, let's take, we'll return one plus, and then we'll call sum of two, three. And that one would go through and say, okay, well, two is going to be the front. And then the rest of them is going to be the list three. And so we'll return two plus the sum of three. And so for that last one, the three, it's going to go off to this base case and say, okay, well, the sum of three is three, return that, add that to the two, return the five, add that to the one, return a six, and we'll get our result back. So you can have any number of sort of mandatory things in the front here. In your lab nine, your function is going to be expecting pairs of values. So maybe you'd have two things in front that you're pulling off. Um, you might have one base case or two base cases. So you might have a case here where if I pass, if I get just one value, so I might have a base case here for if there's just exactly one, I might have a second base case where if there's just exactly two values passed, and then a general case for if there's more than two, then we'll do something with the first two and then have our args dot, dot, dot for everything after that. But this is the idea. And again, you can pass any number of arguments. You can pass any data types that this operation is valid for. Right, whatever operations you've got inside your, your function definitions here have to work on whatever's passed. But if I happen to call this with uh, one, two, three, then it should actually go through and give me the sum of those three values as integers. If I call it with floats, it should give me the sum as floats. If I call it with strings, well, what does the plus operation do with strings? It concatenates them. So presumably it should go through and concatenate the things that I pass. Let's actually just quickly make sure that I have this working. Okay, so let's run our template and just see if this actually works. So it goes through and calls sum on those three integers, one, two, three, and get six. Calls it on those three floats, 
and gets 28.3, which I hope is valid. Uh, it looks about right. Calls it on those two strings and it concatenates them together. Yeah, so it is actually appearing to work on a variety of different data types with different numbers of parameters. So that's the idea. Now, if you want to go through and create C functions or C++ functions that accept arbitrary number of parameters, you can wander off and do that. I will leave it there.